Hello everybody. God bless you all my father's children. I trust you have had a glorious day in the Lord today. Thank God for his goodness and for his mercy that he bestows upon us day after day. And let me start by saying I understand some of you had difficulty on Tuesday. There was a technical problem that we had and some of you were able to pick up Tuesday night and I understand that some of you weren't able to get it, but it is there now and you can go back and catch up from Tuesday evening. We were in Colossians chapter 2 and we went down to verse 7. We ended at verse 7. So go back and catch up on that and basically you see that we were centered in verse 7 where we talked about being rooted uh, and built up, strengthened and thankful in God. So if you desire to catch up on what you may have missed Tuesday night, and I'm so sorry for the technical problems that we had, but if you go back, you can catch it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you and honor you for who you are. You are our God, our Savior, our Deliverer, our friend. You are our all in all. We can do nothing without you. It is in you that we live and move and have our being. And so we are grateful tonight for your goodness that you have shown to us. Father, we bless your name for blessing us, that we might be a blessing to someone else. Now we pray, God, for tonight that you would strengthen our heart and cause us to say only what you would have us to say. Bridle our tongue, O oh God, that we might utter those things that you've placed in our heart and that it might be received to the hearers that they, hearing your word, may gather strength, encouragement, healing, and deliverance in Jesus' name. For you sent your word to heal. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you confirm your word as you said you would with signs following. And we thank you for it. Whatever you do, we give your name praise. Amen. I want you to know that I love you guys. I am so grateful for the opportunity to be used of God to share his word with you. And we depend upon God and we believe him to accompany this word even on tonight and bring you the fullness of his knowledge and the glory that he has for you in understanding his word. So let's go tonight into the book of Colossians. And we're going to pick up this evening in um, this, I believe this is our fourth study out of the nine that we're doing in the book of Colossians. And we're in chapter two, and we're going to start with verse eight. And tonight we've been, we've been talking all this time in Colossians. Our theme for, the, for this study has been uh, against the tide. We're going against the tide. The ungodly system of the world, the, the system that the world has set up, and how it is opposed to the things of God. We saw that when we are going against the tide, we have different understanding of things that the world does and says, and even we see tonight believe that the church of Jesus Christ, we are different, saints of God. If I could ever get us to understand that we are different, you know, my mind goes back when we did the study in 1 Peter. It said that we are strangers. We are strangers. We're, we're just here for a little while. The world is not our home. Oh, God, how different we are. How different we think. How different we behave. We have a total separate rule of conduct. It is by the word of God that we live. It is by the word of God that we do the things we do and act the way that we act. Yes, we are peculiar because everybody is not going to follow this path. But God has called us and chosen us, selected us. Oh my God, aren't you privileged? You have been selected, handpicked by God. Oh, if that don't excite you, what can? You've been handpicked by God to receive his spirit to live a life pleasing to him. God has chosen you and called you by his name that he might minister in you to help to carry this gospel 
to the entire world. Your world, may, your influence, your circle may not be every continent, but you have an influence in the circle, the part of the world that has been given to you. Will you be faithful to that call? Will you use all your energy to that call and realize that you can't do the same thing, be the same way, act the same way, think the same thoughts? <laughs> Oh, Lord have mercy. We have been called to go against the tide. It's not always easy when you're swimming upstream. It's not always easy. We saw how Paul said it. He says, I, I serve you, but I suffer. I agonize for you. There's a suffering that's, that, that comes to us for going against the tide. When we want to be successful, we said this, when you want to be successful in the Lord Jesus, you serve, you suffer. There's so much involved in being successful that's different from the world's idea of success. And then when we were together the last time, we said it causes us to walk steady, rooted in him, built up in him. It causes us to be strengthened in him. And to be thankful, full of thanksgiving. And so tonight we're coming to look at being in him. Uh, and verse, we're going to begin at verse 8. Um, and we're going to look at a couple more points of what it means to go against the tide. And in going against the tide, we think like a Christian. We think like a Christian. How many of you know that? Those of you that have been saved for a minute, <laughs> your thinking has changed. The Lord talks to us about renewing our mind. We used to think one way, and now as a follower of Jesus Christ, we think different. Our mindset is different than that of the world. And so let's look at Colossians chapter 2, verses 8, and I'm going to read down to verse 15. Will you read with me? Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and we are complete in him which is the head of all principalities and power, in whom also we are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also we are risen with him, through the faith of the operation of God, which have raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing, triumphing over them in it. Now, sometimes I know you, you look at that and you say, oh, she said a whole lot and I didn't understand half <laughs> of what she said. And this is some of the reason why a lot of people, when they're reading in King James, they're a little bit disturbed. So I'm going to read it to you in a more modern translation so that it, don't, it doesn't bother you. And then we're going to come back and we're going to expound on these things. So let's go back to uh, Colossians chapter 2. And we're going to pick up at verse 8. Um, and I, I, sometimes I, I'm wondering, do I want to go to message or do I want to go to the new living? And 
Uh, I don't want to read both. So if you have one of those translations, we're going to do New Living. But if you have something different, it's okay. You can read from that. And so let me read it like this in the New Living. But now is the time to get... I'm sorry, hold on a second. I want to get Colossians chapter 2. There you go. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of the world. Notice I said spiritual powers of the world, of this world, rather than from Christ. So right away you see there's a difference in the spiritual powers of the world and the spiritual powers of Christ. A lot of people want to talk about being spiritual. And they talk about a higher being and a higher power. And, and Paul calls these kind of philosophies human thinking that comes from spiritual powers of the world and not of Christ. For in Christ lives all the fullness in a human body. King James said, lives all the fullness of God bodily. All that God wants us to know, he has wrapped it up in the word, in Jesus. So you also, listen here, all of the fullness of God dwells in Christ. And then he says, and you also are complete. You are complete. Please keep that in your mind. You are complete complete through your union with Christ. If all of the fullness of God is in Christ and you because of your union with Christ, then you're made complete. We're going to bring that to you a little bit better in a little while. Who is, and this time about Christ, he is the head over every ruler and authority. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. You know, even today, we circumcise our baby boys. You cut back the foreskin. That was a sign uh, that was between a covenant between God and the nation of Israel. And that's one of the ways that people could tell, because on the eighth day of a child's birth, a male child, they would circumcise him. They would cut back the foreskin of his genitalia. Uh, uh, and he said, but you are circumcised. We are now uh, children of Abraham, but we're not circumcised physically in our physical bodies. He says, uh, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision. Woo! The cutting away of your sinful nature. You hear what I said? What I said, God said? Listen. He said, he cut away. He circumcised your sinful nature. Somebody ought to be happy right there. He said, by the circumcision, cutting away of your sinful nature. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. And with him, you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all, somebody say all, he forgave all our sins. He canceled, canceled, one more time. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away, nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly 
by his victory over them on the cross. Oh, that was so good. My God, I go back and read that all over again. Can't you see what he did? So here's the points that, and from verse 8 to uh, verse 15. Read that again. I read it in the New Living. Oh, I almost feel, almost feel like reading it in message. <laughs> I'm tempted. You think I should go ahead and try it? <laughs> Listen, if you have the message translation, will you read that in message so you can get it again and see what the Lord is saying? to us. It was so good reading it in New Living, and so we thank God for that, that part of his word. Y'all know, when it, when it bothers me like that, I, I, I have to go back. I'm sorry. Go with me, okay? Because this is really being impressed strongly upon me, and I have to be obedient and go back and read it to you in message. I don't know. Okay. Just go with me, okay? If you don't have the message translation, will you listen closely and let's see what it's saying. Watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything. They spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and the empty superstitions of spirit beings. But that's not the way of Christ. Everything of God gets expressed in Him so you can see and hear Him clearly. You don't need a telescope, a microscope, or a horoscope to realize the fullness of Christ. I hope y'all heard me. And the emptiness of the universe without Him. When you come to Him, that fullness comes together for you too. His power extends over everything. Entering into his fullness is not something you figure out or achieve. It's not a matter of being circumcised or keeping a long list of laws. No, you are already in insiders, not through some secretive initiation, right? But rather through what Christ has already gone through for you, destroying the power of sin. If it's an initiation ritual you're after, you've already been through it by submitting to baptism, going under the water with a burial of your old life. Coming up out of it was a resurrection. God raising you from the dead as he did Christ. When you were stuck in your old sin dead life, you were incapable of responding to God. God brought you alive right along with Christ. Think of it. All sins forgiven. The slate wiped clean. That old arrest warrant canceled <laughs> mm. and nailed to Christ's cross. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their shame and authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. Then I'm going to just read this part. So don't put up with anyone pressuring you. In details. Oh, we're going to come back to that. You see, I think that's why the Lord wanted me to go ahead and read message for you. I hope you understood and, and caught it. Here's what we want to talk to you. In Christ Jesus, we think different. We think different. We go against the tide by thinking like Christians. Our thinking process is different. Paul says unto it, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophies. Things that they're teaching that depends on human tradition. It depends on principles of what man says. Saints of God, we have to be different. Uh, he said, they do this in opposition or is opposed to what Christ says. 
So many people want to give you rules and regulations. You have to do this and you have to do the other. And, uh, oh goodness, Lord have mercy. You, what he said, some initiation that you have to go through. But what the word of God is telling us, and this first point we want to bring out, is that in Christ we have the fullness of God. All things are in Christ. You see? And then he says, and we are complete. You don't have to do all of these things that all of these other teachings and philosophies tell you. You, mm, you have to do this and you have to do that. No, you are made complete in Jesus Christ. The songwriter said, Jesus paid it all. All that we need to have the fullness of God, we are made complete in Christ because Christ is the one who met all of the standard of righteousness and holiness that God demands. Christ fulfilled it. And now we are in him. This other point is what we have and we think different about is the forgiveness of our sins. So many people think there's so many things you have to do to be forgiven. No, sweetheart, you just accept the work that Jesus Christ has already done. Oh, he's already done it. It's a done deal in the Lord Jesus. Your, your sins have been taken away. Can I ask you a question? Which sins do you think God has forgiven you of? The sins that you've already committed, you're totally forgiven of, is that all? No, sweetheart. Watch me carefully. God has forgiven you of all the sins you have ever committed. When you received him, your slate is wiped clean. You hear what I say? Clean. God is no longer holding you uh, accountable for past sins. When he forgave you, he forgave you completely. Now the devil want to bring it up and throw it in your face and cause you to feel bad. But I want to let you know if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, all of your sins have been taken away. <laughs> I heard a song. He said, never to be remembered anymore. Jesus took my record of sinfulness and cast it into the sea of forgetfulness. And there never, woo, my God, never to be remembered anymore. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. The world philosophy wants you to think you got to keep doing so many rituals. You got to say so many prayers. You got to, mm, can I say this and y'all not get mad at me? You got to count so many beads and say so many Hail Marys. I ain't bother nobody. I'm just telling it. You got to bow so many times to the east. You got, you, mm, y'all come on. I'm trying to be nice. You got to get in a certain position. You got to do all of these things trying to uh, appease God or whatever it is you think you're trying to do, trying to get forgiveness. If you do a certain sin, then you got to say so many prayers to get that sin washed away. You got to pray so many times a day in order for your sin to be washed away. Saints of the living God, no, you don't. Jesus already took away your record of sinfulness. He already cast it aside from you. There's nothing you can add to it. Jesus already paid the whole price for every sin you ever committed when you have accepted him as your Lord and as your Savior. Can I tell you something else? Here you go. Stay with me. Don't leave me. He not only forgave the sins you've already committed, he's forgiven the sins you might commit tomorrow. All of your sins have been washed away. Past and future. Listen, the blood of Jesus 
is strong enough to forgive any sin that you may commit in the future of your life. His blood has already forgiven you. That, 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 that gets tight for some people in, in your religious mindset. As if I got to ask God to forgive me again tomorrow. Listen, I'm not saying that you presumptuously or habitually keep practicing sin. But I want to say this to you. When you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, all of your sins, not just your past sins, your past, present, and future sins, they've all been washed clean. Here's what Jesus has done for you. He's forgiven you the whole debt and has given you eternal life. So that now anytime you make a mistake, anytime you do a sin, anytime you do something, anytime you miss the mark, Jesus has already forgiven you. And the, uh, 1 John 1 and 9 says, and if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Can I tell you, you're not going to sin tomorrow and be thrown into hell because you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. And those sins are already past and gone. He wiped the whole slate clean. The whole slate is clean. That's why when you really fall in love with him and you recognize that he's totally, did I say totally? He has totally forgiven you. Then you don't have a desire to sin. You don't have a desire to do the wrong things. And if you get fall, if you fall into a temptation, if you fall prey to something, you because you realize how much that offends your Savior, you immediately repent and say, Oh God, forgive me. He says, Then we know that we've been forgiven because my slate has been made clean. The Lord saved me in 1966. I was a young girl. The Lord saved, saved me. I can't sit here tonight and tell you that I've never done anything wrong, that I've never made a sin since 1966. I'm not going to dare say that. The Word of God said we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, I've made some sins. Yes, I've done some wrong things. Yes, I've said some things I shouldn't have said and acted some ways I shouldn't have acted since 1966. Come on. This is, <laughs> oh bless his name, this is 2021, you know I done done some stuff I'm not proud of, but watch this, when he saved me, oh God, in 1966, when the Lord saved me, he placed me in his hand, he wiped my slate completely clean. He put my name in the Lamb's Book of Life and totally forgave me all, A-L-L, -L, all of my sins were washed away. And he put me in Christ so that when God looks at me, he doesn't look at my ability to keep the law, to keep the rules and the regulations. He justified me through Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God. The perfect Lamb of God. He took my sin upon himself. The Word of God in front of said, He who knew no sin was made sin for me. So that I might be made the righteousness of God in him. Totally forgiven. All my sins. Somebody say all my sins. You know, here, right here is a good place for you just to lift your hand a little bit and tell God, thank you. Thank you for giving, for giving me all my sins. I'm not planning to sin tomorrow. Because I love him. I'm not planning on sinning next week. I don't make plans to sin. But it, if, if I should fall, I thank God that is already taken care of in Christ Jesus. And when he makes me aware of it, I immediately confess it and forsake it. And thank God for this plan that has forgiven me 
that has forgiven me. Oh, do you know what it means to be totally forgiven? Not to have it brought up and thrown in your face anymore. Oh, the devil tries. He's the accuser of the brethren. But every time he stands before God and he wants to point out your sin, Jesus stands there as an advocate for you. And he pleads your cause. And he says, Father, but I gave my life for that. I gave my life for him. I gave my life for her. It's already taken care of. The debt has been paid in full. And so, listen to what he says. This is another teaching that we go against the Roman. In Christ, we have freedom from the law. All of the the. All of the laws, the rules, the ordinances, all those things that were packed up against us, God has freed us from it. Now that doesn't mean I, I, I don't uh, practice doing good. Yes, I, I do that. But not in order to gain his love or his forgiveness. He's already forgiven me. And because I am forgiven, now I'm free from the law. Look what he did. Uh, one of the things in John, I'm sorry, in James chapter 2, verse 10, he says, So that whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of it all. Jesus knew that we couldn't keep all of the, the ordinances, all the, the commands, and how human flesh, we were not able to do that. And he says, And if we could, but if we just miss one, then it's as guilty as missing all of it. But the perfect son of God, he could keep it. He could live holy without sin. So he took our sin upon himself. Now, listen, I don't have to worry about the rules and the regulations. Any there things that I don't do? Listen here. Here's one of the things he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. Let me read it. He says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things, but I will not be brought under the power of any. I'm going to read it in the New Living. Watch this. You may say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. And even though I am allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. Oh yeah, I know people, you know, they, they put themselves in a straight jacket as a child of God. Oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. You know, we got these rules, different denominations have different rules that they put on you, you know. Um, I was brought up, um, and so many times I thought, you know, if you're saved, you're not supposed to do this, if you're not supposed to do that. And it's not so much that you have to keep all of these rules and regulations. He said he took all of those things <laughs> and he nailed them to the cross. He exposed it. He was able to keep all the commandments and not offend in any. And he gave us his righteousness. Now that I am the righteousness of God, what do I do? I don't go out and say, oh, I can do anything I want. That's disrespectful and it's dishonoring. And that attitude says that I haven't really come to an understanding of what he's done and of who I am. Because I am a child of God. Nothing stops me. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I want to. If I wanted to do some of these things that the world says, oh, it's no harm in doing that. Oh, it's no harm in doing this. You can do that and still be saved. Why do you want to walk as close to the edge as you can? Not because I can't do it. Someone said to me one time about cursing someone out because they did something to me. And I'm like, oh, it's not because I don't know the words. I know the words to say. And I know how to say them. I don't desire to. I don't want to. 
The Lord Jesus has changed my heart. Oh yeah, you got a, a hard day. And so you think, um, well, I, I, need, I need to get a smoke. I need to relax. I need to get a drink. I need to relax. It's not saying that you can't, but why do you want to? Jesus has wiped that away from you. you then, then we read the part, he said, he took all of those things away from you. He canceled the debt completely. Now, I don't have to do those things. <laughs> oh, God. I don't have to go back to, I say go back. I don't have to go back to a bottle. I don't have to go back to a joint. I don't have to go back to cussing. I don't have to go back to doing the sinful deeds that I used to do. I don't have to do that anymore. Don't judge me. Be quiet. <laughs> I'm talking in the proverbial. <laughs> Y'all trying to get information on my life. Stop it. <laughs> Y'all know I love you. God has forgiven me. He's wiped the slate clean. I don't think the world, the way the world thinks anymore. My thinking, my mind has been renewed. My thinking is now different. I don't have to act like I used to act because the Holy Spirit now lives on the inside. And all that is of me to do is trust the work that Jesus already did. I was buried with him in baptism. I went under the water, crucified. I rose up again in newness of life. He has circumcised my heart. He's cut away all of the sinful deeds. The sin, it's been cut away. He has circumcised me and now not in a physical way, but in a spiritual way. And now I'm safe in him. Fully secured, fully forgiven, fully free, fully free. Everything is not good for me and I don't do it because I love him. Not because I just can't. All things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. All things don't profit. I will not be made the slave of things. I am the slave of the Lord Jesus. He is my master. Not any habit, not any ordinance, not any law, not any person. The master of our life is the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. We'll come back together again and do our fifth study in the book of Colossians. I trust the Lord has spoken to your heart tonight and that he has blessed you tremendously. Those of us who are members of Faith Tabernacle, come on, y'all. We're going to be 10 o'clock tomorrow morning at Faith Tabernacle at the church house. we got a lot of work to do. And so we need all hands on deck to help us to get things in order, okay? So we'll see you tomorrow morning, Faith Tabernacle members. Listen, if any of the rest of you want to come and join me, we sure not going to turn you away. We'll be at 19th and Susquehanna on Saturday morning doing the work that we have to do. 10 o'clock, the Milton wants us to be there on time, give a couple hours. And if a lot of us come together, we can get it done quickly and in a hurry and then go on and enjoy the rest of our day. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you for coming on board. Thank you for your prayers. God bless you, keep you, and may heaven smile upon you. Good night.